Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Mag. I have the Elias Pressure Bandage by Tac Med Solutions. This is similar to the Israeli bandage, which we all come to, to know. And but this one has some different features. This one has some definitely some features to set it apart from the Israeli bandage, and I want to take it apart, show you guys those features, and then demonstrate how to use it. All right, so we'll take a quick look at the overall packaging here. This is the six inch version. They make a four inch version. They also make a flat version as well. So it's kind of depending on your application of how you want to be running this in your kit, what you have room for, things like that. Like it, it has directions on it. So if you want to hand this off to someone who's not familiar with how to use it, it's there. If you have a brain fart in the middle of trying to use this, you've got good directions there. We have pull tabs on the center here. Also have pull tabs on the end as well. All right, so let's pull this open and see what we have. All right, so you can take that, leave that for your directions. It's got a place, pl uh, paper cover. Now this is our bandage that we're gonna wanna use. So, has a absorbent pad here. Then we can pull this here. And there should be some goodies tucked behind here, which there are. So we have material to make an occlusive dressing. So if you had a chest injury, like a sucking chest wound, penetrating trauma to the chest, you have the ability to uh, make an occlusive dressing by using this plastic material here. You can also pull out this gall. So what they're thinking was if you have an entry and an exit wound, you can pull this out, put this onto uh, one side, to go on the other side and roll this on. Has a pressure cup as well. There again, this is just adding more pressure to the galls, to the um, wound. Has the Velcro tab so it doesn't want to come unrolled on you. You start unrolling it. Catches there. And catches out the bottom. Now it also has the plastic clip at the end, like we're used to with the Israeli bandage. So when you get through wrapping it, we put the plastic clip on. So it's this elastic material, kind of stretchy. This is where the wound goes. This is sterile when it comes out of the packaging, although you're really not overly concerned about it. So let's get the mannequin out and let's show you what we'd use this for. All right, so where I like to use a pressure bandage is like in the junctional injuries, such as like up here in the groin, we just can't get a tourniquet up here in the shoulders, armpits, where you just absolutely just can't get a tourniquet up high enough, you put the pressure bandage on, you wound pack it first, obviously, and then put a pressure bandage over top of it. But you can use it for multiple purposes. Obviously, this thing has tons of uses. So what we could use this for, let's say we have a nasty wound. We'll do it on this leg since this leg's amputated. So if we have a nasty wound that's not squirting blood, we don't need to put a tourniquet on, but we want to obviously control bleeding. So there, put this where the injury is, pull it up, and then just make this bandage nice and wide. Still the same thing, if you want to create a little bit more pressure, you can rotate it to put exactly where that cup is, because that cup is where we'd want to put the wound. So we're pretending that our big nasty wound is up under this cup. So if you want to put a little bit more pressure on it, you can pull it across just like that. Okay, we found the end of our pressure bandage and we can just use this to lock into place by pulling the last of our strand together. Now this is a pressure bandage so we should still have a distal pulse, should have good capillary refill past this. We're not creating a tourniquet here. So as we've talked about before on the channel, anything in the chest from the neck down to the belly button that has a hole in it, we want to put an occlusive dressing, meaning we seal it off. You can't wound pack these, you're just moving stuff around. The best thing to do is absolutely just to seal this part off. So with this bandage here, we have this occlusive plastic material that we can make an improvised chest seal with. If we had an exit wound, you can tear this, put it on the back, put one on your back, put one on your entrance, entrance wound here. So we basically tear this in half or whatever you need to do to make two chest seals out of this to make that entry and exit wound. Once you secure this, you could use your Elias bandage here 
to secure that. So we can wrap it. Just be careful and not make this too tight to impede the chest uh, rise and fall. If you get it too tight, obviously this can't expand their chest like they're supposed to. So just be careful of that. But this will absolutely work to make an improvised chest seal to hold it in place. So one bandage doing multiple things, I like it. All right, so here's my redneck wound packing machine. You can see it squirting. Hopefully you can see that on camera. But it's squirting out blood, it's bleeding. So the students can feel the water rushing by their finger and see it. All right, so here we're gonna be demonstrating that we have an entry and an exit wound here. I don't have an exit wound here, but we're gonna just pretend we for a minute. So what I can do is use the extra gauze that comes in the bandage here. And wound pack it in. Going east, west, north, south, all that. Get it packed in all the little crevices. So we wound packed this side now. So we're gonna pretend that I have a wound over here up underneath the leg. So this bandage here goes up underneath the leg now. And now I can pull this bandage over. That's gonna hold pressure where I've been wound packing. I've held pressure here for five minutes to get bleeding controlled. And I just keep wrapping this around. So now this is gonna hold pressure on the entry and the exit wound. So something else you can look at doing is using this eye cup here, just reversing it. So if someone has an eye injury, they have something in their eye, whether it be a chemical, for an object, whatever you want, you want to cover up both eyes. Now the patient has to trust, trust you that you're not going to like run them into walls and stuff, but you want to cover up both eyes. That way they don't continue to track with them. So you could use the eye cup, reverse it, and then cover their face up with the bandage. And you can still come up here and so you don't impede his breathing. And secure it. Now obviously the same concept, someone has a scalp injury, you can use this bandage to do a scalp injury. This bandage, these pressure bandages have tons of uses. So if someone has a scalp injury, you can use the bandage here on top of the head, side of the head, forehead, wherever you want to get, get it wrapped. It works fantastic for that. So I hope this video helped. You never know when you'll be the first responder, moving the right gear and the right training. Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. You guys have been begging for this review for a long time. Uh, this is Elias. Elias? I'm going to say Elias. No, I'm say Elias. I think that's how you say it. I don't really know. Does anybody know? Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. I have the Elias. Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. I have the Elias. And then wrap this around the other way. Dude, man's lung just fell off. Oopsie. Let me fix his lung real quick. He's got other problems other than an eye injury if his lungs are falling out. Ah.